Hey everybody, welcome back. So today, I've got Charlie here, getting into everything, and he is going to help me talk about his favorite subject, and that's food, when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. Hey guys, welcome back. So Charlie and I here going to talk to you guys about feeding today. And a little quick intro on him. He is a boa imperator. He's a bit of a rescue. Um, folks that we had gotten him from and just had a house fire. Um, it wasn't a total loss fire, but it was enough to get the electricity turned off. Um, so they were in pretty bad shape and uh, he was pretty cold, had a pretty bad respiratory infection when we got him. But we got him nursed back to health, and he's doing just fine now. Uh, and of course, since we're talking about food, that's his favorite subject. So uh, he's going to come hang out with me for a little while. So he wants to show you all his mustache. His signature boa stash that they've got. It's kind of where his name came from. Because I was looking at him, I was like, man, there's only one person I can think of that's got a stash like that. And I'm not naming him after... Oh. Charlie Chaplin, so his name's Charlie. So anyway, talking about feeding. Now, a lot of people will, um, you know, wonder how big of a piece, how big of a prey item they're supposed to feed, and how frequently and whatnot. Um, the rule of thumb that most people go by is when you're feeding constrictors, you feed them something that's equal to the girth of the largest part of their body, and that's pretty on point. Uh, you really can't can't go wrong with that too much. But, oddly enough, it can be a little bit more difficult than you may think sometimes. You know, you get, you get one of these big guys and you're feeding them a rabbit. You know, the rabbit's all fluffy and may look like it's twice the, uh, twice the girth of the snake. But once you get it thawed out, you get it fed, you know, the animal elongates, the fur's, you know, not an issue anymore. You know, you might be looking at your snake going, man, that didn't look like it was a really big meal at all. So what I found when I was starting out that helped me a lot, took all the guesswork out of it essentially, is I feed my guys 10 to 15% of their body weight. And real easy way to, to look at that is like yesterday I fed my female retic. She's 35 pound snake and 10% of that's three and a half pounds and 15% of that's five and a quarter pounds. So the meal that she got yesterday was 4.7 pounds and it was probably the perfect size meal for her. Um, you're only going to need to, you know, you're only going to need to feed them no, no, no more frequent than every two weeks when you're feeding at that rate. Um, you know, if you've got smaller snakes, hatchlings, and so forth, you may want to go ahead and feed them every week. But once they start to mature a little bit and get older, um, you definitely don't want to just be shoving food down their neck. Yeah, it's going to make them grow faster, but it's just not healthy for them. So you're looking at probably feeding a mature animal every two to six weeks, kind of depending on them. Uh, and again, sometimes they'll, they'll refuse for weeks, even months at a time. But let me show you here really quick uh, the feeders that I keep on hand. And I'm looking for pigs at the moment, but those are proving to be pretty difficult to find. So my smaller snakes, my hognose, my corn snakes, my baby burmies, they're on small mice. And these are the two different size mice that I keep. Um, I've got my burmies on rats now. These are the um, pinky rats that I started her on. And now she's doing... Uh, one of these rat pups a week. Uh, these are always a lot better if you can find them. And I've got the medium rats. This is what my adult ball python and my carpet python eat. I've got the large breeder rats here and oddly enough I really don't have any animals that eat those right now. My uh, Burmese python, or I'm sorry, my boa constrictor 
is on small rabbits she's eating one to two sometimes three pound rabbits but typically one to two and I've got a five pound rabbit right here which is what my two big retics and my berm eat so inside of here you're gonna see I tend to keep things organized by size um, and down the bottom here this is where all the rabbits are with the weights on them actually time to stock up a little bit once I can see the bottom it's time to get some more uh, got smaller rabbits in here you know just over a pound and then over here is where I keep my bags of medium racks and then I've got several bags down here of extra large breeders so as you can see um, once you get over a few reptiles, if you want to have any kind of food on hand, uh, you're definitely going to end up needing a chest freezer because you won't be able to fit all of these in your regular freezer. And the uh, spouse may or may not appreciate having all the dead rats and rabbits in there. Now, when you're getting hatchlings, you know, reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, ball pythons, boas, um, yeah, you're looking at feeding pinky rats, pinky mice, just getting them started. Um, I do recommend switching to rats just as soon as you can because rats have got a lot higher nutritional value than mice do. Um, so you're going to get uh, just as much out of a rat pup as you are out of a large mouse, um, probably twice over. Uh, they're a lot better for your animals. And then of course as they get bigger, you move into rabbits, pigs, goats, the mailman. Don't do the mailman. Um, it's bad for the hobby, really bad. But um, another thing to keep in mind too, if you can find a local rat breeder, uh, definitely in your best interest to go find them because you can buy rats and rabbits from your local box pet stores. You're gonna pay an arm and a leg for them. You're gonna go broke, you know, just feeding the animals that you've got. If you can find a local breeder, their prices are normally a lot more reasonable. And um, so you can, you know, put that extra money in your pocket, which will ultimately end up going into more snakes, which is going to mean you've got to buy more food um, until you're like me and you run out of space and now you're looking for a new place with more space so you can buy more snakes and buy more food. And, um, be ready for a nice long journey if you're getting into reptiles. So you'll have, uh, you know, rabbit breeders around here. That's another thing that you can... Uh, that you can be on the lookout for. I've got one guy out here who breeds meat rabbits, another one who does show rabbits. Uh, so I'll get the culls from them and, and buy the meat rabbits from the other guy as well. Um, so those suppliers are always best. I mean, like I said, you can get them shipped to you, but you're going to pay pretty absorbent in shipping fees on all of these animals, you know, especially once you get 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds worth of, worth of animals that you're stocking up at once. And here's a couple really useful tools that I use. Um, you can get them really cheap. You can order them online. Probably pick you know pick up the regular bathroom scales at the uh, at the dollar store or whatnot. And for my larger snakes, the ones over 20, 30 pounds, I really find the easiest way to do it is to just stand on a bathroom scale, get my own weight, <clears throat> which is really the most depressing part of keeping reptiles at all especially for an old soldier like me that's used to being in shape it's a discussion for another day but you stand on it you get your own weight you pick up your animal um, hold it step back on the scale subtract that you know subtract your own weight from it and you got the weight of your snake um, these right here this little gram scale is really nice for weighing the smaller animals and i'll use this to weigh the uh, prey items as well these are really inexpensive to buy online and they're real easy to use. Um, if you're going to weigh your snake, you just put a container of some sort on it. It's going to register the weight of the container. You tear it, um, and then it zeroes it out. Now, whatever's left in there is the weight of your snake. All right, guys. I really appreciate everybody hanging out with me this afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and get back upstairs in the AC because it's warm down here, and I'm sweating like I owe everybody in the room money. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. That's what's going to keep us going through this. I'm going to be putting out content the rest of the week. I work seven days on, seven days off, and this is my off week, so this is my time to get as much stuff out as I can. So, hope you guys have an outstanding day, and I will see you again on Intrepid Exotics.